Oh, baby, I never thought this day would come. Firing Larry Rothschild was needed. This team was pressed. This team was in trouble. This team is in trouble. Guys, this happened mid-season. This happened while this team is finding a way to go on a postseason run. This is happening as this season was absolutely falling apart. And per the San Diego Padres, the Padres have dismissed pitching coach Larry Rothschild. The San Diego Padres have relieved pitching coach Larry Rothschild of his duties. Manager Jace Tingler announced today, Ben Fritz will serve as the interim pitching coach for the remainder of the 2021 season. I've heard a lot of things about Ben Fritz. Kirk Wood is telling me Ben Fritz is a pretty good name. I guess we'll have to see in terms of Fritz. But guys, there is so much that we need to discuss. Happy Monday, everybody. Wow. The Potters will host a Zoom, guys, at noon today. Noon today. This is a huge day in our organization, everybody. If we look at the injured list, if we look at the kind of pitchers, the injuries, guys, a lot of this is on Larry Rothschild. A lot of this is on Larry Rothschild. Blake Snell's inconsistencies all year. Finally telling Blake Snell to throw your fastball as we enter August. The Nelson LeMay continuously getting hurt, telling guys to overuse their slider. Snell, for some reason, continuously throwing his changeup. Guys, this is huge. This is huge. This is a huge day for the organization, man. And Jace, Jace Tingler is 100% the issue as well, Annabella. I, 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 I hate to say it. I hate to disagree with you. This is huge. I want to hear Jace Tingler is going to come on at – noon today we're going to hear what he has to say guys but are they talking about ross child on 97.3 the fan i want to know if they're talking about ross child operating in such a way that keeps our guys safe we have some guys that are unvaccinated and we have a lot of our guys that are serving part-time i mean look it's a foregone conclusion that one of those teams is going to win the nl west don't want it to be the dodgers do not want them we do not want it to be the dodgers no they they went they went live guys um before the Rothschild thing occurred. We'll give Jace Tingler a chance to see what occurs. But guys, let's be real. Do you guys know how many series we have won the last two months? And guys, everybody. This was a step in the right organization for our franchise. We have won two series or something in the last two months. Guys, we haven't swept the team since the Dodgers. Guys, this is a huge, huge, huge day for our organization. This is a big step in, our, in the right direction for our organization. This is a big step for our organization. And guys... How shocked are you? How shocked are you that this happened mid-season? I'm asking y'all, how shocked are you that this happened mid-season? I'm shocked. Oh, I'm shocked. I'm shocked this happened. Guys, heading into the Dodgers series, guys, this is – hey, let me talk to you guys real quick. Guys, this just goes to show you how panicked this team is. 
It may not, they may not show it to the media, but look at the moves the last few weeks. The Arietta deal, panic. Firing Rothschild. We bring him on literally 500 days ago. Guys, immediately gone. There is panic in this clubhouse. And the players are staying very even keel to the media. You saw Stammen yesterday, very even keel. You see Jace, very even keel. But my goodness, this was unexpected from all avenues. You know, we knew that Larry was going to be gone. But we thought he was going to be gone when we failed to, you know, qualify for the playoffs. Where's my water, bro? Hold on, guys. Guys, hold on one sec. Oh, I see it. Oh, guys, this is a great day for our organization, guys. This is a fant- This is a fantastic day for our organization. This is an awesome day for our organization. Jace Tingler will be going live to the media at about 12 p.m. Pacific time to discuss this. I guess we'll do it on here, everybody. But I just cannot believe it. And, guys, this is it comes at a time where I want to do some of our research on Ben Fritz, who this guy is for the San Diego Padres. You know, Kirk was saying that he's a great guy. Do we have information on this guy? I don't even know who this guy is. I'll say it again. Organization. Does anybody have information on this Ben Fritz guy? I don't like how all these guys are within the team for a year. Does anybody have information on this Ben Fritz guy? Oh, see the bullpen coach? I didn't even know that. Call me a casual. Oh, he's been with the Padres. Here we go. Ben Fritz. He certainly played pedigree. He was pegged as one of the top two-way prospects in the country after pitching and catching at Fresno State. The spotlight's on Fritz. In fact, he never finished the book and saw... Well, money, okay, money ball. He was the 39th overall pick. Fritz, Mo, okay, so he, he was a pitcher. He was a pitcher. He was a bad pitcher. So that's great. That's great. That's a good start. The Angels released Fritz at the spring training. I want to hear his time as, okay, first as Peoria's pitching coach and later as the rehab coordinator. Um, He was with okay this is a good line right here he was with Adrian uh, Andres Munoz Morejon during their developmental years he saw Chris Paddock Lamette Garrett Richards on their journey back from Tommy John surgeries so that's good to know that's good he was on the A's during the Moneyball era as well interesting he played catch with Paddock daily during the second half of his rehab slate He knows how to – this is – um. is this talking about Garrett Richards? He knows how to pull the harness back when we're doing too much. He knows when we're capable of more. He's just a great observer. Yeah, I mean, Larry Rothschild <laughs> – Larry Rothschild was a great observer. Wasn't a great speaker. He wasn't a great guy at telling his pitchers scouting reports. I thought we were big on analytics. Factual, factual. Interesting. So, guys, definitely within the next – guys, definitely within the coming days, we are going to learn a lot about Ben Fritz, who this guy is. But this stream, we can do a Ben Fritz preview stream. 
This stream is more about Larry Rothschild and his departure from the San Diego Padres. What do you mean, Julius Peppers? Julius Peppers, you were a great defensive end. Larry Rothschild was hands, two hands on telling these pitchers to throw some breaking shit. Hopefully, this takes more of a hands off approach. Guys, what is this? What is this Julius Peppers guy saying? What is this Julius Peppers guy saying? I, I agree with you that Larry Rothschild was terrible. What? Dude, have this is definitely your first time on my channel because we've been talking about this for months now. Did, did, did I say something? Did I did I say something incorrectly? I I don't I don't know. Did I did I say something incorrectly? I don't really care. I'm going to continue what I'm saying. Obviously, Larry Rothschild was not good with the San Diego Padres, and I think ADHD makes a great point. You know, talking about hopefully Fritz takes a more hands off approach. I think the pitchers got in their heads too much about wanting to, <laughs> bro. About um, uh, Trevor, man, I, I'm losing my shit. Um. I, you know, I think my opinion was that, you know, ADSU makes a great point kind of about how they took two hands on of approach with Larry Rothschild telling, you know, getting in Blake Snell's head to continue to continue throwing these kind of pitches. Right. But I think it's right. you got to get less more X's and O's. Just use your fastball attack hitters. Why was someone like Blake Snell starting to be super successful? Because he just started using his fastball. He started using his fastball. No, 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 no. This is funny. Trevor, I love it. I love it. I love it. I love it. So, guys, look at this tweet. Guys, look at this W of a tweet. You guys got to see this tweet. This 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 tweet is a this this tweet is an absolute W. You guys ready for this? You act like you're on speed or something. I appreciate it. It's just called having natural energy. If it, I, I'm sorry if I'm I'm not. Uh, I got to calm down for you. You don't have to watch. You don't have to watch, Lindsay. I appreciate you tuning in though, caring about your San Diego Padres. This is me. I am hog and hog ain't changing. But welcome to my channel to all my new viewers, man. So it's gonna be very interesting to see what kind of um, man hog stop smiling about something. Padres. I'm so happy right now. <laughs> I'm so I'm so freaking happy. I'm so happy right now. I'm not, I'm not going to calm down. I'm absolutely not going to calm down. The amount of agony we have endured the last set, guys, guys, it felt like it, guys, it felt like it felt like three years ago that I was in San Diego on a beautiful Wednesday night, ESPN Wednesday night baseball, June 23rd at Petco Park. The Padres had just swept the Los Angeles Dodgers. And that felt like three years ago. That felt like three freaking years ago. This is the biggest day in our organization in a long, long time. And this shows that the panic button has been long pressed in San Diego. I can't wait for what Jace has to say. <laughs> Lindsay. See ya. See ya, honey. I'll have a good one. Take care. All good. All good. Haters are my motivators. <laughs> ADHD, relax, bro. Don't be rude. Don't be rude. Haters are my motivators. So, guys, here we go now. All right. So we let now now we now we take what's up, Jason. So now we look at the major league standings, right? We look we look at the major league standings. Let's see where everything kind of falls into place. So now we look at here. We are 13 games back of the National League West. 
13 games back. We are 2-8 and eight in our last 10. Now, if we look at the wild card standings, here we go, guys. For the first time in over two months, we are on the outside looking in. Remember that run differential, too. Was We were plus 120 in run differential. Probably in the last two weeks, that has gone down 40 runs. Okay? We're 2-8 and eight in our last 10. The Reds just swept the Marlins. And here we go. We have, we're, we're, we're heading into this Dodger series, guys. We are heading into this Dodger series, going to be an absolute slugfest, an absolute dogfight. <laughs> yeah yeah i bet they did yo yeah hey yeah i know you can see it in the clubhouse man you 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 you, you, you can see it in the clubhouse man it, it's going to be uh it's going to be tough it's it's going to be tough um yo mods hello mods <laughs> I love it, bro. I love it. I love it. I love it. Bet. I love it. Oh, I love it. <laughs> bro, you realize you're helping me, right? You're watching me. Why do you keep watching me? <laughs> keep watching me, bro. Keep watching me. You're helping me out, bro. This never happened before. Why is it happening today? Who cares, man? Enjoy it, guys. Enjoy it. I love the trolls, man. I love the trolls. Again, everybody, the Padres part ways with pitching coach Larry, 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 who spent the last two seasons with the team. Ben Fritz will now serve as the interim pitching coach for the remainder of the 2021 season. What's up, Javi? How you doing, man? How you doing on this celebratory Monday morning, my guy? How you doing for the celebratory Monday morning, my guy, Javi? Seems like you're new to the channel, buddy. Hope you subscribe. Join the hog watch. Guys, again, listen. At this point, it's what can – who is Ben Fritz? He's the bullpen coach of the San Diego Padres. Jason, when we end the stream, we kind of previewed Ben Fritz's story. Um, we did that at the beginning of the stream. Um, but, guys, at the end of the day, this this is it, all right? This is the situation of the team. Of course, bro. Of course. I want to inform you guys about everything that's going on. And thank you for being thankful. Thank you for being a kind person. We haven't seen many today. But guys, that is the situation, right? That is the situation. This team doesn't really have a lot of moves left. We saw the Titanic video on my stream about a week ago. We've been seeing these videos of this season imploding in front of our very eyes. You cannot script the implosion of the 2021 San Diego Padres. You cannot script it. They are running out of moves. The poker chips are subsiding at the table. And this is kind of like you've lost five straight hands. You're going all in now. You're going all in. It's pretty simple, guys. It's pretty simple. Do you think our pitchers start to ball now with this move, Matthew? So let's answer your question, buddy. Welcome to the hog watch, my guy. Listen, here was my biggest problem. Here was my biggest problem. Our pitchers were reluctant to attack the zone. They were way too worried about specific scouting reports. 
way too worried about percentages of the kinds of pitches that were thrown to specific batters. You really saw that with Blake Snell early on in the season, right? Continuously throwing his changeup in which opponents had a 420 batting average against. I think ADHD made a great point earlier in my stream is that we want Ben Fritz to have more of a hands-off approach. Attack the zone. Use your stuff to benefit you. Of course, analytics are important, but I also believe in manalytics. The eye test. Do what does best. Blake Snell, throw your fastball. Throw it. Just throw it, throw it, and throw it. I disagree. I disagree. Dude, literally, Blake Snell is the best case study when you're analyzing the Larry Rothschild era. It is the it is literally the best case study. Why? Guys, I keep telling stream it, and everyone agrees. Why has Blake Snell been better? Why has he been better the last three to four starts? It's because he's trusting his stuff. And he's he's slowly, he's slowly turning off the brakes on the breaking ball. He's been hammering that fastball, 96. He's hitting 97 with it. Oh, no. we're No, listen, guys. The, the, the playoffs is, is very, very not looking great right now. Probably a 30% chance this team makes the postseason. The Reds are firing on all cylinders. Vladimir Gutierrez just had a good start. Luis Castillo has been a lot better. Joey Votto's hotter than fish grease. They got Moustakis back. Winkers will be back soon. Castellanos is going crazy. And they have an easy September. They face the Pirates a plethora of times. They face the Tigers. The Potters have to face the Dodgers, the Giants, the Cardinals, the Astros. Whew. Facts. Factual. Factual. Okay. Yo, Frank, no, no, seriously, Frank, seriously, Frank, let's discuss this. Obviously, Larry Rothschild is not the person going on on the mound. And obviously, there's a lot of internal problems going on with Blake Snell. I wasn't asking Blake Snell to be the Cy Young Award winner that he was three years ago. But Frank, my question to you is, why did it take Larry Rothschild 90 days to finally tell Blake Snell to stop relying on your off-speed stuff so much and use your fastball that has gone you so far in your career. A good pitching coach is able to have that conversation even if Blake Snell backlashes and says, I want to develop those other pitches. But when your team is trying to win a freaking pennant, you have to tell this man that your fastball is the reason you've been so goddamn freaking effective. But it didn't take him that until three starts ago to really hammer that in him. Yeah, why does he walk the park? Why does he walk the park? You tell me why he walks the park. Look at his off-speed miss rate in the zone versus fastball miss rate. The reason he walks the park is because he throws off-speed way too much of the time. It's not happening this year, my guy. It's not it's not happening this year. <laughs> Would be nice. Would be nice. And again, guys, only time will tell, right? Only time will tell if the problem was Larry Rothschild. Only time will tell. But it was a move that had to be made. It was a move that had to be made. Let's listen to this. Let's listen to what he said. Let's listen to what he said about th five months ago. I got to respond to some emails. Let's see what he said about five months ago.
You know, it's nice to go into a season knowing that you can match up in any game at any time. How much input are you having during some of those decisions? Because you've seen a lot of these guys on the other side of the ball. Um, are you able to put in, a, you know, hey, this guy's looking great. This is somebody that may have a lot of upside we can work with, whatever maybe. Yeah, I mean, AJ will call and ask about different guys as I think he gets closer to, um, you know, the, the interest gets deeper and deeper. So, uh, you know, we had some conversations and, you know, obviously I'd seen Snell quite a bit and I'd seen Darvis some, um, you know, and you can go down the list. Um, you know, anybody in American League seen a lot of and, and a lot of the other guys also. So he would call and just ask questions and, you know, I'd find out whatever I could. Well, I, yeah, that's a question a lot of people are asking as far as, um, and I'm not sure that there's a clear path for that, but um, I think we've gone a little bit slower with some guys, just, uh, you know, just to be sure that they're ready. And, you know, we get into the season early on, they're probably not going to be ready to go seven, eight, nine innings, uh, but uh, it's going to. Yeah, they'll probably not be ready to go seven, eight, nine innings. They they won't be ready to go seven, eight, nine innings at any point this year. We can catch up on the chat. Got to find a way to win tomorrow and get hot. Yeah, guys, it's it's it's. Darvish will not be starting tomorrow probably, but they're going to activate him. Hopefully he can go Thursday. We may have to have a bullpen game tomorrow. I'm not going to be at Petco this week. I'm not I'm not sure if this I, this team deserves my money anymore. Um, yeah, I didn't think it would be happening in August. I bet all the Dodger games are sold out. I mean, let's check. Let's check. Let's check. I doubt it. I doubt it. Yeah, probably probably all sold out because Dodger fans, though, huh? Only 10 tickets left. Oh, at lowest price. Let's see. It's definitely not sold out, but it's probably close. It's pretty cheap. Nah, you can get a ticket everywhere, guys. It would be, I think, the proper way to do it in that, you know, we need to keep them healthy for the whole year and not worry about them ready for that first game or whatever. I Dude, Frank, keep spamming in the chat, bro. I'm not blaming it all on the I'm not blaming it all on the pitching coach. Moves had to be made. Moves had to be made. Or an overrated, not a good major league baseball team. Yeah, I wonder why. I wonder why. Where do you start with in any situation in any sport? Where does it start with? When you have a team that struggles, that has high expectations, where do you start with when you turn in terms of making moves? Yeah, we, we, we all share your frustrations, Frank. We've been here long before you, bro. We share your frustrations. We've watched every pitch of this team this year. We've watched every pitch, Frank. Every pitch. I understand your frustrations. If you'd like to come talk to me and join the show live, come on to the voice channel in the Discord. We can hear your frustrations live onto the hog watch. I'm sure everybody would love to hear you. I'm sure. If you guys haven't joined the Discord, Frank. Join the Discord. Come onto the voice channel. Instead of spamming in my chat, you can come talk to me live on my show. Please, I'm inviting you. All right, bro. Done done with this guy, bro. Yo, mods, by the way, I can you guys you guys should be handling these situations, all right? I I I can't like I I'm not I don't want to have to be like listen, I'm going to I'm going to let haters talk. I'm going to let them talk. But this guy's just spamming and being annoying. So I I have to time him out. All right? Who cares? Move on. Dude wants attention. I want to hear what Rothschild said. Uh, I know all the games count, but I think the healthier we stay, the more those games are going to uh, pile up. 
and the better off we're going to be able to win them as long as we can stay healthy. And I think that's part of the puzzle early in the season. Well, it's kind of both things. And we used it last year and, and could see the numbers. And the bullpens were usually really good. Um, so, you know, as we get into games, it'll be interesting. But uh, with him, uh, it was a lot of front side stuff, um, you know, to keep the uh, gloves, glove side strong and not push it off. And, and um, you know, it, it, some of it emanates from the Hopefully it's all going to be corrected and he can get off to a good start. He's talking about Gore. He's talking about Gore. Uh, he needed to do with as far as the fastball because it had to play better than it, it did last year. And I think that could have gotten corrected during the year, but we didn't have that luxury because a number of bullpens, especially the last month, you could really see it. But um, it would start out in games at times. and then Dude, just so – such like a monotone – like just – ugh. Ali Habib, I never – when did I say this? Guys, 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 I never said the reason the Padres are bad is because of a pitching coach. It definitely contributes to it. But everyone, why are all these trolls like having misconceptions of what I'm saying today? The Padres aren't solely bad because – of Larry Rothschild. He is a part of it. There is a plethora of reasons why we're bad. We don't work counts. We don't hit for power. We cannot hit the ball. Okay? That that is that is three major reasons why this the 2021 San Diego Padres are bad. We continuously get hurt. That's four major reasons. When we're healthy, we can't stay when we get back, we can't stay healthy. There's a fifth when we come off the IL offensively, the person who comes off the IL is colder than the freaking North Pole. It's one of many reasons. It's one of many reasons. No, no. Listen, Alib. I, I, no, Alib. I'm no, no, no. I appreciate it. I'm just saying it's one of many reasons why we are bad. It's one of many reasons. Why we have been bad recently. He's exactly, exactly. He's a part of the problem. You think? You think? kind of fade and they kind of fall into some bad habits. So um, hopefully it's all going to be corrected and he can get off to a good start and, you know, build some confidence up and, and you'll see the guy that you saw a couple of years ago. Hi, Larry. What's it like for you to work with you, Darvish, and all and just kind of learn all the different pitches he has considering he has so many different weapons to work with and so much experience with all of them? Um, it's, it's interesting in that uh, he knows himself really well. Yeah, you 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 can't fire you can't fire Tingler right at this time. No, listen, honestly though, I, I get your frustration. You you can you can't fire Jace Tingler at this time. As much as we all kind of want it to be, firing your pitching coach when you're one back of the wild card spot is is already unorthodox. It's it's ballsy as hell. You can't do that to Jace Tingler. You as much as I kind of want to agree with you, you can't do it, man. Because then, when you when 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 that happens, the season's done. And and it just doesn't work like that. It just doesn't work like that, bro. I agree, but you can't hire a new staff. In a, you're we're about to hit September, guys. You can't fire your manager right now. What are you saying? Guys, I want to hear the Jace Tingler presser. I want to hear the Jace Tingler presser at noon. Guys, watch a video, a little more of this video. I'm going to be back in like two minutes. Got to respond to some things. Oh, and I, I think we're 
uh, people have gotten in trouble with him in the past and not trouble personally, but just uh, trying to help him as a pitcher is that uh, they kind of took away what he's really good at, and that's manipulating the baseball and knowing what pitches to make when and what he's confident in during a game. And, you know, um, if you go back to when he first came over, you know, and he still has it, the velocity is 98 to, you know, and can be up from that. And, you know. You Darvish's velocity? Stop. When people see that, they want people, they want the pitcher to throw fastballs a lot, and that's not necessarily what's what works. And he's got a lot to be up from that. And you know, when people see that, they want people, they want the pitcher to throw fastballs a lot, and that's not necessarily what's what works. And he's got a lot of confidence and is able to ma manipulate the ball with spin. And I think that's uh, that's a real strong suit. The ability to throw the ball as hard as he can is is a really good strong suit. But they play off each other, and I think a lot of times it plays backwards from what people would would like to see. But I think it's highly effective, and he's gotten comfortable in his own skin with that. And I think uh, for me to get in the way of that would be a, a big mistake. I thought he threw the ball really well. Um, he's coming. You see. That literally goes. That literally goes into what he's been saying all year long. That, that 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 literally goes into what he's been saying all year long, right? What has he been saying? Just because he can throw ninety eight doesn't mean that he should continuously throw his fastball. Well, he did. My God, guys, he he's so anti fastball. I went. I went to Sunday's game. The fans were shouting to move Larry. Pitching from Weathers and Diaz was was wow. That's crazy, man. That's crazy. Also, also, what 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 is what has gone into the collapse of Ryan Weathers? Like, how much of that can you blame on Larry? Honestly, I I don't know. I'm asking you guys. A lot, you guys, a good amount of you guys know more than me. I'm asking you guys, what goes into that? The whole, the whole. Ryan Weather situation. He's been awful the last month. Very unfortunately. Very unfortunately. In a good shape. Um, you know, he's worked on some things and still has some work to do, but uh, we'll, we'll see as we go into the games. But, um, you know, I guess – saying that I don't like to use that much, but I will. He's in a good spot. You know, he's um, in a position when we start games uh, to step forward, I think, and, and we'll see where it goes. But he's a young kid, and there's still some things that he can work on. Um, but he's, he's fun to watch, and, you know, he ages me a lot because I had his dad also. So, um, you know, when he came in that playoff game in Texas. All right, guys, here's the get-to-know Ben Fritz. Oh no, we already, we already, we already, we already overlooked he that article. Down and I knew he was a little bit nervous, and I said, "You know, you're really making me feel old." And he kind of looked at me. And I said, "You know, I coached your dad years ago," and he kind of laughed. So um, it was interesting, but you know, you get to that point in life, and it's nice to be able to, to be able to do this this long. So, um, but he's an interesting guy, and um, his work at it. Uh, you know, a young guy that has a pretty good feel for pitching. You has been going every other day, open, off, open, off, open, live. Is that something he's always done, or why is he not taking the extra day of rest? No, he has. This time around, he went uh, bullpen uh, pretty light, and then, you know, through the batting practice. Um, and then, you know, we'll go – We'll we sat down and talked about a schedule that would work, how to build up arm strength and, um, you know, all that stuff. So um, – I think the schedule's not been over, you know, not been overloaded, um, but he's got the chance to build some arm strength and, you know, get through some of the stuff that he needs to get through as far as working on pitches and things like that without, it's it's really not been very taxing. You know, the sides have been light. Uh, there's been heavier ones followed by lighter ones, and there's been two days in between uh, the first two or three sides. All right, guys. Oh, I got to catch up to chat. I got to catch up to chat.
the kid is like 13 years old and thinks he knows how to fix a major league baseball team. You're talking about me? I I I I don't know how to fix this team. I'm just analyzing what this team's doing. Um I mean, yo, here's you know, listen, I'm not listen, all right guys. I'm there's of course I don't know how to fix this team, right? Number one, though, a general core principle that is not instilled in this organization right now is what? What is the mantra that I believe reverses the whole cultural nature of this franchise? I'm 21. Thank you. I just shaved. But here's the thing that changes everything. It's having accountability over loyalty. I've been saying this on my channel for a little bit now. It's about having accountability over loyalty. The problem is right now there's loyalty over accountability. All the puppet things, Jace Tingler's AJ's puppet, the whole Rangers lineage, giving guys like Profar $21 million contracts, Things like that is where loyalty takes control over accountability. But, uh, just what have been your initial impressions of uh, Mackenzie Gore here uh, early in camp? Uh, really good. You know, um, he's he's come in with a, a purpose. Um the ball's coming out of his hand with explosiveness. Um, you know, he's worked on some things breaking ball wise and uh, gotten some better spin on the curveball and, and the changeup. You know, as he gets some innings in, the changeup's going to play really well. Um, he's a young kid with a good arm that right now is um, going to use it. And so let's listen to that again, everybody. On the Ken's three sides uh, early in camp. Uh, really good. You know, um, Let's do that one more time. Here, uh, early in camp. Uh, really good. You know. Stop the cap. Let's do that one more time. Uh, Mackenzie Gore here uh, early in camp. Uh, really good. You know, um, he's he's come in with a, a purpose. Um the ball's coming out of his hand. Bet, bet. Stop the cap. <laughs> Stop the cap right now. Stop the cap. No voices, bro. Guys. Guys. With explosiveness. <laughs> Um, you know, he's worked on some things breaking ball wise and uh, gotten some better spin on the curveball and, and the changeup. You know, as he gets some innings in, the changeup's going to play really well. Um, he's a young kid. As he gets some innings in, the changeup's going to play really well. Oh, bet, bet. Stop the cap. <laughs> Stop the cap right now. Stop the cap. <laughs> There's so many trolls. Um, he's a young kid with a good There's game. so many trolls in my stream today. It's one guy. It's one guy changing accounts. It's great. It's great. It's great, bro. <laughs> good arm that right now is um, going to use it. And so the changeup, you know, sometimes comes and goes a little bit until they get settled in. But uh, it's been good to see him here and where he is and, you know, the work he's done this winter. So, um, you know, I, I think it's going to be exciting to watch. He had some timing issues in his delivery at the alternate site last year. Guys, by the way, 15 minutes. 15 minutes till we see Jace Tingler. We have the live presser apparently, according to Ben and Woods, they were saying at noon. So that should be very interesting. Your, um, just to your naked eye, do they appear worked out or, or where is he on that? Yeah, I think uh, worked out and plus, you know, um, the, la the stuff last year was, it was just so different, you know, um, 
you're a kid that comes in with a lot of fanfare and, and uh, rightfully so, but you know, you, you go to a place where you're there every day with the same guys, you're facing the same hitters every day. And, you know, um, some guys are okay with it. Some guys, you know, can, can have an effect. And I think when you're a kid with that kind of fanfare coming in that, I think everybody looks around and expects, you know, just incredible things. And, you know, you, you're not necessarily there yet. And I think that impacted him a lot, but I think he's taken it in a positive way and, and used it to his advantage this year coming in here. And so, you know, I, I think it's all on the plus side. It, you know, it might have been worrisome at some point, but I think, you know, with his personality, his makeup, you know, everybody knew he'd come through it, and, and he's coming to this camp and throwing the ball really well so far. The one similarity that is pretty glaring is that they were, they're were they both smart pitchers. You know, and I think uh, Ryan has gotten that from his dad and a really good understanding of the game um, ahead of his years. You know, so uh, I think David's done a really good job working with him. And, you know, I've talked to David a few times, and he's really – he understands it and that – he doesn't want to be overbearing with coaching his son and um, wants, to let, wants to let people do the work. And he wants to let Ryan to figure a lot of it out. You know, I just don't know what happens. Yeah, it seems like Darvish is coming off the IL, everybody. I cannot wait. I cannot wait for this presser soon. I cannot wait for this presser soon. It should be good. It's going to be great to hear that. But my God, guys, it's uh, still, still pretty in shock what happened, man. <laughs> so many trolls, bro. When is when is um when are we gonna hear um I think it's uh at 12 guys. We're gonna hear it. Is it John John Kintara? Very nice gal. I think that's pretty strong. And I can point to examples of people who did not do that. You know, just as you. Yeah, guys, John, John Kintara's show at 12 p.m. Apparently, that's when Jace is going to go live. I want to confirm that. We're going to hear it live on the Hogwatch. I want to hear if that's actually the, um, the case. I want to see if that's the case. Yeah, people are frustrated right now, guys. Like, you know. I understand the whole trolls. Guys, don't worry about it, guys. People are frustrated. Guys, we have to remember, this is a very, very frustrating day for our organization. As, as much as we're celebrating, as much as we are happy, guys, this is also very frustrating. Did we ever think, you know, two months ago we'd even be in this situation? Absolutely not, guys. So, guys, listen, guys, don't, guys, don't worry about trolls, all right? Don't, don't waste your time, please, guys. Don't don't continuously fight back in the chat about him. All right, guys, we move on. It's all right. I appreciate. It. I know you guys support me and defend me, but they're just they're just attention seekers, guys. You're good. You're good. It happens. Appreciate you, JD. It happens, y'all. Appreciate you, JD. Appreciate your support, guys. It, guys, it happens, guys. It happens when channels grow and stuff. You see trolls. When did I... When did I say this? Guys... Guys, when did I say this? This is crazy. This is crazy. I never said this. This is hilarious, man. What is going on today? I I literally 
Dude, I literally posted a video. First of all, I know you guys are just stumbling on my channel right now. The YouTube algorithm is finding you guys. I posted on my channel like two months ago. I did say the Padres shouldn't trade Weathers, but I was also saying his advanced stats were showing he was completely overperforming. Yeah, I said he would surprise people. And how good was he to start the year? And then I said towards the trade deadline, I said towards the trade deadline that his advanced stats, his advanced stats were showing that he was overperforming. Dude, you haven't been on this channel. Who even are you, bro? Guys, it's all good. It's all good. So, guys, seems like we should get Jace Tingler shortly, man. Seems like we're going to get Jace Tingler on the show very, very shortly. Here's Ben and Woods. We will carry Jace Tingler's Zoom press conference live today at noon. Live today at noon. This should be good. This should be good. I can't wait for this. I cannot wait for this. So guys, let's 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 talk about Ryan Weathers. No, I think it's interesting. I think it's interesting. Jason, feel free to I, I appreciate your opinion. It's it's an it's an interesting conversation because what do you guys think? What do you think has been Ryan Weathers' recent downfall? You guys remember when this guy started out the year, he was dealing. He was incredible. The dude's cutter looks great. He had velo to his fastball. Then they started pushing his innings a bit too much. He went down with the forearm tightness. We were concerned. They sent him down for a bit. Then they had the innings limit. And then just kind of his last five starts, it started in Miami where things changed. Um, and it's curious. It's Jason, I ask you, Jason Bailey, what do you think caused his reversal? Rather than he's just a bad pitcher. The struggles of our pitchers are pretty similar. So I ask you, Jason, honestly, where do you think, what do you think happened to Ryan Weathers? I'm asking you that that caused him to be so bad. No, 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 you are, you are. I'm asking you, what do you think caused Ryan Weathers to become bad in the last month versus why he was so elite in the first two months? I'm curious. You, you probably know more than me. I want to know your opinion. I want to know your opinion. What what why do you think he was so good in April and May? And and what do you think changed? Yeah, my clock has been broken for years. Interesting. Very in very interesting. So let's take a look at that. That's very interesting. You think it could have been the leg injury? Because he was a stud, guys. So let's look at that. Ryan Weathers injured versus Colorado. What was the date of that? That was July 11th. So let's look at his stats since then. Okay, so <clears throat> guys, look at him in April and May. Stud, right? Here's the Rockies injury. The Rockies injury was right here on July 11th. No way. Wow. He had one good start after it when he just came back and then got blown up since. Blown up since. It's pretty crazy.
Oh, guys, again, Steve, we're just talking about Larry Rothschild. We're just talking about pitching today because we fired Larry Rothschild. Guys, there is so many reasons why we have been bad the last few months. There's been so many reasons, guys. We're just talking about pitching today because we fired Larry Rothschild. It's true. It's true. <laughs> it's true, buddy. Bye bye, Larry. Results in Tommy John. <laughs> no, we we are we 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 believe it, man. We we don't. I I don't think they're gonna make the playoffs either. Unbelievable. Unbelievable. Um, guys, so we have Jace Tingler very shortly, apparently. Jace Tingler very, very shortly in a few minutes. Should be interesting to hear what he's going to have to say about this. Um, is Jace Tingler next? That's the question. Do you think they should fire Jace Tingler? It's about a 50-50 split right now in terms of what Padres fan base feels. And I get it. But when the – Yeah. Yeah, what do I make of this? Um, it's 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 interesting because he is really injury prone, and I think you know hopefully as he gets older, he's gonna have to learn how to play a little safer, right? What makes Fernando so special is his athleticism. He's dicey. He does a lot of things that you know a lot of humans cannot do. That comes with higher durability issues. I 100% get that, right? But he's starting to make these changes that are good for him. You know, not diving for those balls in the outfield. I think that's why they moved him to the outfield. But I think for sure that during his maturation process, he's going to have to learn how to play smarter. He's going to get the shoulder surgery this summer. I have the exact same shoulder surgery as Fernando's going to get, as you guys can see right here. Look, if you guys can see my shoulder. These are the scars. This is the exact shoulder surgery Fernando's going to get. He's going to get his labrum done. He's going to get his rotator cuff done. It's going to get you, um, you know, it's, it's it's going to be good for him, but he's going to have to be careful, no doubt about it. He, he's definitely injury prone. Um, but that doesn't mean that injury prone players are able to figure it out and, you know, not be injury prone. I think he's going to be okay. Sell what? Yeah, I'm. I'm sorry. I'm support. I'm sorry. I support my sports team. Sal, you're in day one, bro. You turning, bro? What surgery did Bellinger do? Yo, Sal is a day one. I'm sorry to see him turn like that. It's unfortunate. All right, guys, let's hear what uh, is Taylor going live now. Philadelphia Phillies are now they're one game back for the second wild card in the National League, and we're going to hear from Jace Tingler. This is like, going to be very interesting because uh, uh, when you take a look at this pitching staff right now, it's uh, battered and bruised. Uh, Hugh Darvish hopefully going to be able to come back and either start tomorrow night's game against the L.A. Dodgers or on Thursday night. Uh, that's in question. Blake Spell going to throw on Wednesday night, and the Padres not sure right now uh, who's going to factor in Thursday. But uh, we're going to find out why now was the time to dismiss Larry Rothschild after a very up and down year for the Padres starters. The bullpen's been absolutely fantastic all year long, but the starting pitching has been uh, here, there, and everywhere. 
But what were we saying about the bullpen? When the starting pitching struggles and you have to rely on your bullpen this much, your bullpen starts getting taxed in August and September. And you see Craig Stammen's numbers have been inflating. Tim Hill's numbers have been inflating. It's tough when you have to rely on your bullpen this much to win you games in April and May, and it comes back to haunt you in August and September. calls and we'll uh, tell you a little bit more about Ben Fritz who's been with the Padre organization since 2015. A rough weekend for our San Diego Padres. They were very fortunate I thought on Saturday night to uh, win that ball game four to three after yeah. only having one hit but Jake Cronenworth came up with a big two out two run homer to tie it against Aaron Nola. The Padres win it in walk off fashion on a wild pitch in the bottom of the 10th and they were able to escape with at least one. Bro I want to hear from Tang man. When are we going to hear from Ting? Jesus, bro. Dude, big ups. Come on, bro. Big ups, bro. That's, that's fucked up. To say and following the press conference, and we're going to run it in its entirety, we will uh, take your phone call. So uh, stay. A child over the year, but at the end of the day, uh, the Padres uh, feel with 36 games to go in the uh, season, uh, this is the time to uh, make uh, – uh, the move uh, and the replace Larry Rothschild, who, by the way, I think is a really, really good pitching coach. It may not I, have worked out here in San Diego, but I think Larry Rothschild's a very good pitching coach. And I think if he wants to get back in the game next year, he'll probably be given that opportunity. Larry's 67 years of age. And, you know, you just don't know uh, where the Padres are going to go. Ben Fritz could be the long term guy. Uh, maybe with. Yo, predictions for Tingler? Predictions for Tingler, what, what, what's going to be said in that direction? It's going to be very interesting. Guys, the Discord's been absolutely going crazy after the firing of Larry Rothschild. If you guys have not, make sure you join the Discord. Make sure you subscribe to the channel. Make sure you turn on the post bell notifications whenever I go live. Happy Monday, everybody. It's been a rough Monday. The chat has been very, very toxic today. I guess the YouTube algorithm has been in search for trolls today. So it's, uh, yeah, it's AJ Preller. It's AJ Preller. Obviously, there's a lot of um, discussions with other people. I bet Tingler was, you know, informed for sure, but it's it's Preller. Exactly. Yeah, I see, Audrey. I had multiple dislocations on my shoulder. It's unfortunate. It's a surgery that you have to take. When is Ting going live? Impressive, I think. After his first couple of uh, opportunities, I think Reese Kinnear has really settled in and done a nice job coming out of that Padre bullpen. So we're waiting on Jace Tangler and the Padres down at Petco Park. I know there's going to be a lot of national media on this call. This is a big uh, news today. It's huge. The Padres right now, as they sit in third place in the National League West, they uh, uh, have a lot of work to do. Let's go out to Petco Park, and here's Jace Tangler. Here we go, guys. Tangler. Affiliation, I will call on you. In the interest of time, we just ask that you keep to one or two questions per person. We'll start off with Bob Scanlon. Hey, Jace. Obviously, it's never easy to have to make a change to your staff, but why was now the, determined to be the correct time to make a change with Larry? No, you're right. It's 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 never easy and uh, a really hard uh, decision. But at the end of the day, um, I think it's best moving forward. We've got, I believe it's 36 games left. Uh, there's been, you know, a number of, uh, of reasons, um, but I think, you know, the, the, the lack of just consistency, the lack of uh, production, the belief we have uh, ability. They aren't showing the video, bro. And, you know, we want to, you know, change the voice these last 36 games or so. And, and uh, you know, Larry's brought a lot to us, uh, a lot of experience uh a ton of knowledge i believe he was the right guy at the right time we've won a lot of games uh with larry's the pitching coach uh but moving forward we've been in a situation uh where you know we've we've certainly had some injuries there's no doubt about that uh but we've had uh just some some inconsistency on the mound and i just think at the end of the day we haven't um uh reached our, our level of production consistently on the mound and with 36 games to go, 
uh, want to try to give a different message, uh, a different voice, and and ultimately, I hope uh, Ben Fritz will 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 take over the duties down the final stretch here. I hope. Jace, is it the feeling it's the content of the message? Was it the way the message was being delivered, or a combination of both that needs to be changed right now? No, I think it just really comes down to just the the, the lack of consistency right now, and um, you know, certainly over the last couple of weeks, yes. Um, but we, we haven't reached our, our level of production. Oh yeah. Huh? Um, of, of what we're capable of doing. And instead of, uh, waiting and seeing what's going to happen and staying stagnant, I thought the best thing to do, uh, for this team moving forward is to, to bring in, uh, a different voice, a different message. He said, I thought he said, I thought, was it Jace's call? I assume since you're the one speaking to this, that this was your decision? This was 100% uh, my decision. That's correct. It was Tingler's decision. Uh, I've had uh, discussions over the last couple of weeks uh, with AJ. Um, we've gone wow. back and forth uh, have, having discussion. Um, and I believe it was, you know, maybe 10, 12 days ago uh, where, where we brought it up. And uh, obviously it's a hard decision. It's, it's wow. a really tough decision wow. to, uh, to give it a week, 10 days uh, to see if things would, would turn around. Um, and then ultimately last night, uh, AJ and I spoke. Um, obviously a big decision like this. Uh, you never want to be wow. um, reactive. Uh, you want to you want to talk it through. I've talked with AJ. I've talked to the uh, the group upstairs and the baseball operations. Um, I've heard uh, opinions, and ultimately, a hundred percent, it was my decision. I know you said voice, uh, new voice, but what, what is it that you hope to accomplish by doing this now? Yeah, I think being able to add uh, Ben Fritz here the, these final 36 games, and I do mean that with you know just a little bit of a new voice, a, a new message, a, a new tone. Uh, Fritzy uh, knows these guys, has been around these guys. He's been with the organization on on several different roles. Uh, he's been a coordinator. He's been a pitching coach. He's been a rehab coordinator, and he's been in the major leagues uh, the, these past two years. And I believe he's done a great job uh, with our bullpen. I think he is um, uh, one of the reasons our bullpen has performed uh, very well this year. Uh, and so being able, with his experience, um, knowing the system, knowing the guys, and be able to, to provide his perspective, ultimately I think is going to give us our best chance to pitch uh, to our capabilities down the stretch. I have one more. Um, and this is not to suggest that anyone else should uh, – you know, be fired, but how is like this Larry's fault and other things that are going wrong are not other people's fault? What a question. How is this Larry's fault? Yeah, it's, it's Larry is definitely not a, not a scapegoat in this. Um, Larry has done so much for this organization. He's done so much in, in his career, just as his experience uh, in the game. Um, again, uh, you know, to me, as the manager, ultimately, I'm responsible uh, for the staff. Uh, I'm responsible for um, our performance and and uh, getting our players to to play to their abilities. And ultimately, I, I made the decision um, with the the idea and the thinking that this is going to be best for us moving forward. Andy Halpern, he dodged the question. The inconsistencies. Um, do you believe that Fritz's message and his words are what will turn the inconsistency? Yeah, out? talk about dodging a question, my man. Is around, or is there something in specific that he's going to do that will change that besides the message and the voice? Yeah, I think the, the, the new message, the new voice, the new set of eyes and lens and perspective, and uh, Fritz, he does a great job as well um, using his resources and, and – and, uh, uh, being able to use the Preston Mattingly's and the Peter Somerville's and, and, and be able to get different perspectives. Uh, but ultimately, uh, what we're looking for is more consistent performance on the mound, uh, certainly in the starting pitching area. And again, I, I believe this is going to give us our best chance down the stretch uh, for our pitchers to to uh, reach their potential. I like you 
to the Jace Tangler press conference live here on 97.3 The Fan talking about the dismissal this morning of veteran pitching coach Larry Rothschild. Injuries, um, as well as the bullpen, the bullpen being good um, for, for a long stretch of the year yep. versus what had to happen today. Yeah, you try to weigh in all those things, and that's why it is an incredibly hard decision, and that's why um, I've done a lot of talking, done a lot of thinking, you know, gone back and forth. And to your point, you definitely weigh uh, the injuries, you weigh all the factors that come in. And we've shown flashes uh, throughout the year, but I think at the end of the day, it's just been uh, a little bit uh, too inconsistent. Um, we've only had some flashes of the guys uh, pitching to, to, to what I believe is their capability and, um, you know, looking for more consistency down the stretch. Thanks, Jay. Bryce Miller. Hey, Jace, um, you've answered this to a degree, but just to frame it a little bit differently, a little over a week ago, AJ kind of touted Larry's track record in the playoffs and, and discussed that when, when that was brought up to him and, and he was fired before your team got to that point this year. And um, AJ also kind of cited the impact of injuries uh, and, you know, Darvish and Paddock are on the way back fairly soon, it sounds like. So what changed, if anything, in such a short period of, of time? I think we've had those discussions over, I don't know if it's been the last 10 days or the, the, the last two weeks. 10 days. Um, and ultimately, uh, Larry was the right guy for the hire, uh, especially with the young pitching staff last year. Uh, his pitching staff pitched us into the playoffs. Um, and then, you know, this offseason, we, we acquired, uh, you know, maybe some more Veterans. veteran frontline pitching. And just uh, throughout the year, uh, again, you know, there, there, there's a lot of factors to it. Um, there, there's some inconsistent performance. We believe, you know, guys haven't uh, been as consistent at, at the top of their game. We've certainly had some injuries and, and some other factors. And so after talking about it uh, 10 days ago, um, you know, we made the decision uh, to see if this thing will turn. Um, and, and if we'll get some guys rolling and it's been uh, very much uh, unfortunately the same and instead of staying stagnant uh, i thought it was best to be proactive right now and how much did uh, feedback from the pitching staff itself influence the decision if at all you said you kind of surveyed the landscape there broadly interesting yeah it was um more uh discussion uh, internally uh with aj and myself um, with baseball operations, uh, those were the majority of the conversations. So the players weren't so involved. The staff was involved. The the pitching staff, or, or the uh, all the pit, all the arms in the uh, on the twenty six man. Were the players? Um, I'm in discussion with those guys, but I I did not have uh, discussion on ultimately making a decision on Larry uh, with those guys. No. Interesting. Right, thank you. Andrew Interesting. No, the players were not involved. Jeez, what happens to Ben's bullpen now, and how is that handled? What happened to Ben's bullpen? Yeah, so um, we still have some things to, to line up. Um, not only what are we going to do down in the bullpen. They don't even have a bullpen coach. Uh, after, after this call, uh, I'm going to get with the group. Uh, the pitching group um, right now. I certainly want to get Ben's take uh, going forward, not only on bullpen and alignment going forward. Obviously, Fritzy is going to be in the dugout uh, now. Uh, so we're going to have discussions. We kick some ideas. We'll, we'll give clarity to that, uh, whether that's later today or, or tomorrow. And uh, I also want to get his opinion on, on starting pitching uh, for tomorrow as well. So we, we got some things that we've got to weigh through. Does this move today speak at all to the urgency of kind of where you guys are? Absolutely. Right now, situationally in the standings, you're, you're outside of the playoff picture. And Absolutely. Right for, for, for a while now, just kind of maybe turning things around. I think it speaks to, to more of uh, what I said earlier is we're looking for uh, a fresh voice, uh, a, a little bit uh, of a newer uh, perspective down the stretch. And we're looking for more consistent production uh, from uh, a big group of the guys that we believe a lot in. Troy Hirsch. 
Jace, you, you've used the term uh, consistency a lot from your pitchers, but I'm wondering, are you looking for your pitchers after this move to have a change in their uh, approach, their dedication, their right. attitude, perhaps? Interesting. This change in pitching coach as well. Good on question. Your pitcher specifically, not the coaching staff. No, I don't think it's more about want to or approach or dedication or work ethic. Uh, it, it, it'll be more on. Uh, a different perspective of, of you know, foreseeing something maybe mechanically or pitch usage. Uh, and, and like I said, just just a different voice right now. Uh, <laughs> looking for more production and, and more consistency at the end of the day. Is this You're listening to the Jace Tingler press conference live from Petco Park, uh, talking about the dismissal this morning of veteran pitching coach Larry Rothschild, bullpen coach Ben Fritz will take over on an interim basis. You're hearing it right here on 97.3 The Fan. Of, of being able to go through the lineup three or four times, and we've seen that. Uh, we've Unfortunately, we've only seen it in smaller flashes, and we believe there's bigger pockets for them to do that, and that's partly what – uh, this move is by bringing Fritzy in. And then finally, the, the pitching depth you have, you've been using a lot of bullpen days. Is there nobody in the minor leagues that can come up and, and be a starter? Is there nobody that's ready at AAA or AA level? We believe that um, our guys that we have uh, right now uh, up here uh, give us a better chance to win Interesting. Uh, than maybe some of the guys that are in AAA and AA right now. If you're just tuning in right now, we are live at uh, Petco Park. Jace Tingler talking about uh, why the Padres dismissed pitching coach Larry Rothschild this morning. You heard it live right here on 97.3 The Fan. And once uh, Jace finishes up, we'll open the phone lines to hear what you fans have to say. A very interesting press conference. We'll get back to it right now. Are you concerned it might be a little bit too late if you're talking about uh, making mechanical adjustments with guys, or are these somewhat simple fixes you think can be can take before the end of the season? Yeah, I don't think there's going to be a lot of drastic uh, changes, whether it's mechanically, mentally, physically, all those things. Uh, but I do believe uh, that it's not too late uh, to play really good baseball and to stay in the fight and an opportunity to get into the playoffs. Thanks, Jason. Harry Bloom. Hey, Jace. I know, I know these are, are, are tough moments for anybody. So, uh, you know, good luck bearing through it. And thanks for uh, handling it as well as you are with us. Um, my question deals with the type of pitching that AJ and the organization seems to pick up over the years. I mean, would you go to like, Darvish, Clevenger, Paddock, these are all guys who have had Tommy John surgery, they've had shoulder problems. Yeah, I know it's tough in baseball to get pitching at some point where some arm, veteran arm that doesn't have something. But when you sit down in the off season, don't you have, doesn't this all start with this? And then you have to like reevaluate how you choose your pitching? What the hell is that? You're right on the fact that, um, the majority of guys, and when, when you look around the, the, the league, and if you're a veteran pitcher, uh, you've got a very high probability of having some type of surgery or arm or shoulder you know, condition, whether that's Tommy John, et cetera. Um, I believe at the, the end of the day, um, you know, we, we acquired uh, all those guys that you just named uh, for specific uh, reasons um, because they've – uh, have the ability, and the majority of them have had big time track record of logging innings and getting outs, uh, and throwing productive innings for us. Uh, and that's ultimately, you know, our goal. I think you look up at the, the you know, the, the off season to be able to acquire Snell, Darvish, and Musgrove. Um, Is Tingler next? Now we've had some guys uh, on the IL or 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 the shelf here or there. Uh, but this move is is more about getting more consistent innings, uh, not only you know from from those three, uh, but also from from the majority of our our, our pitching staff. And uh, at the end of the day, like I said earlier, you know we're looking for just a, a new message right now. Um, we have the guys to do it, 
and we've got a 36 game sprint. If you're looking big picture, uh, if you're looking uh, small picture, we're pretty focused on the Dodgers right now. Yep. Try again with Marty. You're listening to the Jace Tingler press conference live here on 97.3. Why isn't it working? And the dismissal of pitching coach Larry Rothschild, Jace Tingler, and explaining it to I want to hear Marty's question. A few things about Ben Fritz, but can you just tell us a little bit more about him? How relatable has he been with the guys? What they like about him? And, and what can you tell us about him? And what Facts. Doing? Facts. A unique background um, from the, the original book and the movie. Uh, Fritz was... Uh, one of the famous, uh, I guess, first or sandwich picks uh, out of the, the, the book Moneyball uh, from Fresno State, uh, was a catcher, converted a pitcher later on, um, has really studied uh, delivery, studied pitching, has worked within the organization as a pitching coach, knows the medical side as, as the rehab coordinator, has been a part of uh, that process of, of uh, getting, whether it's minor league or major league arms, uh, back and healthy and back to either the majors or minors in, in, in pitching. Um, like I said, the, he's, he's ran the uh, Arizona pitching program. Uh, he's worked with all levels. Uh, you know, from from the lowest level of minor league, and for the last two years, he's done a great job uh, at the major league level. Um, he knows deliveries, he's no know, knows pitching, he knows analytics, and and uh, we're excited. Uh, even though it is a, a, a sad day, uh, um, moving on from Larry and, and a man that uh, I first and and foremost uh, have a ton of respect for who has shared a lot of knowledge and experience with myself um but moving forward i'm i'm also excited for the opportunity for fritz and uh to see what he can provide to our pitchers down the stretch actually we have one more question for aj Caswell. last question then i have to say some things jason you said you'd talk about tomorrow's pitcher later with them but do you anticipate you having to throw another bullpen session or throw again or is that something that's still on yeah I do not um, right now. Uh, I guess he could have maybe a light one in the next day or two, but I don't see anything too intense or extreme. Damn it. No Darvish then. No right. Darvish. Thank you very much, Chase. Thanks, everybody. We'll see you tomorrow. Thank you, guys. All right. You just heard the uh, Jace Tingler prep. All right, guys. That was the Jace Tingler press conference. There's a few remarks I have to say, then we'll get off here. Number one, I respect the hell out of Jace Tingler for this move. Listen, I respect the hell out of this man. He said that he brought it up to Preller 10 to 12 days ago. They were waiting to see if things would turn around. They didn't. Instead of saying stagnant, Jay said, quote, I thought it was best to be proactive. You respect the hell out of your manager for having to make a move like this. He thinks that we believe the guys up here right now give us a better chance to win than some of the guys in double or triple A. He also did not discuss this move with the potential pitching coach change with any of the pitchers on the team. But this was a fully blown Jace Tingler move. This wasn't A.J. Preller. Quote, this was 100% my decision. Tingler cited for the lack of consistency, wanting a new voice for the final weeks of the season. Yeah, I understand it's a lot of games that we lost, but this is a this is a big, you know, this is a big this is a big decision though. No, this this is this is this is a really big decision. Yeah, guys, guys, what a move by Ting. This, 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 there's not really much more to say to this, guys. Again, he believes that the guys have at the major league level will give us the best chance to win. I kind of want to – how do you guys – how do we call into 97.3 the fan? Huh. Is, 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 is there a way to call in? I'd love to call in that show, man. I think people are calling in for much more you can ask of this bullpen. Jace also said uh, aside, and he mentioned the lack of consistency on the mound several times during this press conference. He goes, they've not reached their level of production. 
We need a different voice and a new message. I uh, didn't want to stay stagnant. Better to be proactive and make the move right. He said he met with. Guys, it was the right move. It was the right move. Um, essentially, Jace was saying that the season was over if, if Rothschild was remaining the pitching coach. He's made a move. He's going to hope it works. We're in desperation mode. We are in absolute desperation mode. There's no doubt about it. Heading into the biggest series of the year. Guys, we have an off day today. Then we face the Los Angeles Dodgers for a huge three-game set. We're probably going to have to face Urias, Bueller, and I don't know who the third guy is going to be. My God. Everyone's giving me different numbers, bro. We have to face Scherzer. Bro, we have to face Urias, Bueller, and Scherzer. Oh, my God. Yeah, it's over. Yep. And the Padres right now, not sure who's pitching tomorrow night or Thursday night. Could be bullpen games both days. They're hoping Darvish can come off. He's throwing a couple of bullpens. They're hoping he can come off. You got Blake Snell going against Walker Bueller on Wednesday night. So it's not going to be easy for the Padres. And uh, at the end of the day, this offense has to start uh, taking hold a little Prish, appreciate you, Miguel. Hope you subscribe to the channel, buddy. Tons of Lakers content coming my way when this season starts. Two outs in the bottom of the ninth, and Cronenworth hits that home run off of Nola to tie the ball game. They end up winning it in the bottom of the tenth on a wild pitch. And then yesterday, uh, Kyle Gibson, a guy that deal. You know, I talked about a lot of pitchers prior to the trading deadline, but the one guy that I talked a lot about was Kyle Gibson. Well, you saw what Kyle Gibson did yesterday to our San Diego Padres. He was uh, fantastic out there yesterday and uh, really uh, mixed and matched and uh, kept the boys off of balance. Eight innings yesterday, giving up six hits, one run. It was earned a walk, three strikeouts, threw 103 pitches, picked up his ninth win, dropped his ERA down to 3.06. Imagine if we had Kyle Gibson, man. Imagine if we had Kyle Gibson. Guys, what's the number? Guys, what – what? Jason, is that the number actually? Oh, shit. And they've really got to get themselves together. I don't know. Maybe, just maybe, uh, by taking Larry Rothschild out, promoting Ben Fritz, who's been the bullpen guy, got a good relationship with the players, maybe that in some way can jumpstart this ball club. This offense has not been very good. This ball club swinging the bat is really scuffling, and I don't know why. Is anybody out there explaining to me why the Padre offense has not been good? You know, the other thing. It's a great question. Bob Scanlon. It's a great question. And to Anthony on Saturday night. And, by the way, those guys did a great job. Uh, Bob did a really nice job on play to by play, and Anthony and him worked very, very well together. But they were talking about how the Padres early in the year, you know, were really grinding out counts, working the count, and making those uh, pitchers. You know, go what was I saying? Count, what was I saying? Get into the bullpen. And now, all of a sudden, the Padres have changed their philosophy. I don't know if it's a panic move or not, but they're swinging early in the – 100%. I've been saying this for so long. We stopped working counts. We stopped working counts. And what has continued to happen is that we've been in panic mode swinging early, early in at bats. It's causing pitchers, opposing pitchers to go deep into games. It's causing opposing pitchers to go deep into games. time again heck that one game over in arizona when they were down they made a three okay and then you bring in jake arietta last week after he gets dfa the starting to rotation but now you got the starting uh, rotation where guys are banged up but i don't know how healthy they're going to be when they come back i mean uh, paddock's deal with an oblique and oblique's a very tough injury to overcome Darvish, back problems, working hard. And I really think you, I'll, I'll be honest with you, I think he'd been pitching hurt. I think he knew this ball club was really scuffling, and, and he wanted to go out there and try to do whatever he could to help the ball club, and it probably hurt him uh, more than anything else. That's why he landed on the IL. Okay, and then you bring in Jake Arrieta last week after he gets DFA'd and released by the Chicago Cubs. 
healthy. And I'm not saying guys, it's just everything is just spiraling out of control, man. If you guys haven't, guys, all I ask is hit that subscribe button to the channel. We're getting close to 1,300 subscribers. I appreciate everybody's support. Hit that subscribe button. Hit the like button for all the trolls that came in here today. Make sure you join our Discord. Follow me on Twitter at Hogborna. 288-0973-833-288-0973. Was this the right move by our San Diego Padres, or is this a panic move because they're now one game back of the Cincinnati Reds for the second Coach John Kinter, oh, man, we got a lot to cover today, up until 3 o'clock. Yo, I'm trying to get on the show. Hey, yeah, want, want to know if I can call into the show? Uh, Borna, Evan. San Diego. Uh, kind of want to talk about the move, and uh, if it made sense. All right, guys, I'm going on the show. That our sandwiches do the talking. The KFC chicken sandwich has a huge breaded and extra crispy 100% white meat chicken filet, thick crinkle cut pickles, and real mayo and classic or spicy stacked on a toasted buttery. Yo, yo, we're going on the show. We're going on the show. Yeah, I pro probably should not have said my phone number, huh? <laughs> Oops. I'm, <laughs> I'm sorry. Yeah, guys, please don't hit me up. Please, please don't hit me up. I don't know what I'm going to say, guys. What should I say? What should I say? What should I say? I'm not promoting the channel. I'm not. What should I say? Guys, what should I say? Yo, guys. Guys, what should I say? All right, guys. I don't know. I don't. I don't. All right, guys. Well, hogs going on ninety-seven point three. The fan, the junk. Holy I don't know what I'm going to say. I have no idea what I'm going to say. I don't know yet. Just let, let it happen naturally. Just let it happen naturally. I think I want to talk about we know how um you know it was a it was a big problem to get rid of Rothschild, but what do we do about the offense? What moves do the Padres make? It seems like Damian Easley is gonna be gone after this season, but where does it stand with Ting? Yeah, where do we stand with Ting? This was a move out of desperation. I think this was a move of Ting trying to save his own job. I I think I want to talk about I think this was a move that Ting 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 did to save his own job. I think Ting did this to save his own job. Low prices on wine ship right to your door. 
TotalWine.com, America's largest independent wine retailer, now ships to San Diego. Explore our wondrous selection of 8,000 wines and find something you'll love at amazingly low prices. With shipping included when you place an order of $99 or more on select wine. Get great wine shipped right to your door when you order from TotalWine.com. Shipping available on wine only. Yeah, <laughs> I'm kind of nervous, bro. Let's go. It's a good question, too. Guys, they don't know I'm live on YouTube. Guys, how long is this on commercial? How long is this on commercial? I'm going on, I think, when we come back. Oh, my God. Yo, coach. <laughs> hey, coach, why do we suck? Hey, Coach, why do we suck? We're back. We're back. Let me in. Let me in. I believe he's a free agent right now. I wonder if the Padres may uh, ring his phone up and uh, get him back into the organization. We'll have to wait and see. The 36 games of the finish line, see what the Padres can get done and see if they can uh, jump over the Cincinnati Reds and get that final playoff spot in the National League. Kevin and Chula Vista batting leadoff on a Monday on the John Quintero Show on 97.3 The Fan. Kevin, welcome. How are you today? Well, the good ship Padre keeps limping on here. I think that Larry was put out of his misery, and I'm in a way kind of happy for him because it, he looked terrible in the dugout. I mean, the expressions in the body language on him was a shock. They don't have the courage, John, to go back and hire Darren. If they did, they would have done it by now. You know, you and I have long discussed this this pitching staff. Uh I'm, I'm going to voice my frustrations about the Rangers puppeting. About puppeting. Jace Tingler better go. I know, Troy. Troy, I'm, I'm already in the line.
the man that should have gotten fired today is the man that Peter Seidler has a man crush on. And that's the guy who put all this together. When the Cubs knew why they were getting rid of you, Darvish, Mr. Preller did. When the Devil Rays knew they were, Interesting getting, why they were getting rid of Blake Snell, Mr. Preller did. And and this goes on and on and on. I disagree. So, I disagree. Now you've got no minor league system left. You've got nothing that can come along there. And you're thinking that somehow these guys are going to be able to pick this up at the end. This is a freaking train wreck. And I'm sorry to be so harsh. I've been doing this since 1969 as you have, John. I have never seen an organization implode like this one. And and the, the blame that goes, and, you know, unfortunately, AJ and his poker chips ran out. And and this is what we're left with for the future. That's now, you got 36 take. games to go. Do you think uh, letting uh, Larry Rothschild uh, go, you think it's going to make a difference in any way, shape, or form? No, John, come on. If the, the time to have done this maybe should have been a long time ago. The trend was started, as you well know, back at the end of, of May when this team started tanking then, and they've had a sub-500 record since the end of May. I think Preller's a great GM. And why this organization is infatuated with pitchers who have collective history. It's not Preller's fault that everyone gets hurt. Other issues is beyond me. Look at Kyle Gibson. You brought him up yesterday. The, the guy went out and pitched nine innings. He, he was, everyone was so expensive. Oh, dude, come on. Bring me on next. Please bring me on next. Please. You know, upwards of 100 pitches. They don't see Buddy Black doesn't seem to be worried about six innings in Colorado, does he? No, but here no, no. we have a we, – we, we, we freak out when these guys all of a sudden have to be out. Bro, no, bring me on, bro. This guy is fucking dumb, bro. They dug themselves into a huge hole with all this. It's not Preller's fault. Guys if, guys, if he doesn't call me next, I'm done. Dude, I've been streaming for two hours. I don't like the, the move at all. I don't. 
like the move at all because at the same time, being 40, uh, 34 and 38 since May the 30th, but yet you still have a winning record, that does not tell me that the Padres are ready to not compete. They're ready to compete. They just got to pick it up a little bit. And, and Eric, I, I think you bring up uh, an interesting uh, uh, point there. You know, maybe it came down to philosophy. I mean, Larry Rothschild, more of an old school guy. Uh, I think Larry looks at the analytics. He probably tries to use them uh, to a certain degree, maybe not as much as the front office would like. Uh, but he may have gotten to the point with this staff saying, man, we got to get back to pitching. And, you know, this analytics stuff's great, and it helps us some days, and maybe doesn't help us a whole lot the next day. I mean, there's not any cookie-cutter way to work with pitchers, okay? Everybody's an individual. Everybody's got their strengths and weaknesses. And, you know, I don't know. I mean, you might be right on with uh, where the Padres are at right now. Uh, it's 10 teams over 500. You know, maybe it was a philosophical difference, so we're probably never going to know. But, Eric, you bring up a very good point there, and I appreciate that. And you have a great day, my friend. Absolutely, good friend. All right, you take care. I appreciate that. Maybe it was a philosophical difference. Please. I don't know if you folks saw this. Please. You know, I'm always uh, hunting around uh, minor league baseball, kind of watching the Padre franchise. Edwin Rodriguez, who uh, for a short period of time was the manager of the Miami Marlins, been in the Padre organization now a few years. I don't know if you saw it last week. He resigned as a manager in El Paso. Please. And it was really kind of Please. Awesome. It wasn't because of, like, family reasons. He just decided to resign for personal reasons. So that tells me maybe, uh, just maybe, and, and I don't know. I haven't talked to anybody, and even if I did, they probably wouldn't tell me. Uh, I got to wonder if he had the, some type of philosophical uh, problem with the front office here in San Diego. I don't know. I just know it said in the press release he did not uh, – Resign uh, for family reasons. That's normally please, please, why coach. you resign, or if you resign, uh, it's because you're not uh, maybe getting along with the, the powers to be. Let's uh, motor on, Michael and Imperial Beach. You're next up on the John Contreras. Oh Tour. my God! Hey, coach, we're down here at the beach, sending you some uh, cool weather. So that's good. I'm loving it. Uh, pretty nice day today. Uh, Enjoy okay. the beach. Yay. Um, two points. One I had talked about once before. I, I think it might be good to bring in some of that energy from the bullpen. I think we have, we put a lot of resources out in that bullpen, and I don't think we're using, I know we're pitching a lot of innings, but I think we could use them a little differently in the Tampa Bay direction, but I've said that before, that I think, you know, in addition to just the starters uh, being the problem. But the other thing I want to say is I think at the trade deadline, you saw the difference. The Dodgers decided they were going to come back and win it this year. So they got Scherzer and they got Turner. If we had got Scherzer and Turner, I, you can debate whether we would have had to give up too much for a future. But the Dodgers were going for this year, and look where they are. And what if we were going into this series right now with Scherzer uh, as one of our pitchers and Turner in the lineup? So, Well, it'd be a different uh, complexion of a ball game. Uh, there's no question about that, boy. Uh, Scherzer's been fantastic. He's made four starts with the Dodgers. He's 3-0, and uh, pitching great. Turner's been uh, hitting. I know, I think he went hitless yesterday, but he'd been hitting about 352 uh, up until yesterday in a Dodger uniform, and they're hoping to get Mookie Betts back for that final game on Thursday. They'd like to activate him Wednesday, but I think from what I hear, they're probably going to wait until Thursday. Dodgers right now are starting to kick it into high gear down the stretch, it looks like. Well, my point is we had the players in the minor league score and whatever to, to make that trade if we wanted. And what we said was, this is not the year we're going to win it. And when you say that at that level, you're saying it to the team. That's a point I want to make. Well, you know what? I'm going to bring up uh, another point that I don't think anybody's talked about. And you, you kind of you know brought it up to a degree, but I'm going to take it one step further. I just wonder, with Hosmer being shopped around, and it was pretty well known, okay, and, and that deal with Tex was very, very close to getting done, very close to getting done. And they'd have given up Robert Hassel the third uh, going to Texas, and we'd have got Joey Gallo, which I was not a big fan of to begin with. Um, mm -hmm. But I just wonder if that upset the clubhouse a little bit. And I wonder if the position players are kind of ticked off at A.J. Preller because they were looking to trade Hosmer. I, <laughs> I wonder if there's a... Kind of a Guys, essentially, I want to talk about was this move 
on was Jace doing this to save his own self? I want to. I'm defending AJ Preller. I want to say how he's made great moves. Injuries aren't his problem, and I like how he actually didn't do much at the deadline because everything was so expensive. Hey, Coach. Uh, got a few questions. The first thing I really wanted to discuss was, did Jace Tingler do this to save his own self? You know, he talked about this in the press conference, saying that this was 100% his decision as he talked to AJ and other people. But I don't think a lot of people or enough people are talking about, is Jace doing this to save his own self? We all know Damian easily could be next, as a lot of the scrutiny has been on the pitching, but the hitting has been, quite frankly, subpar since, I mean, probably uh, since May. So that's the first thing. And, you know, your first caller brought up the second thing about talking about AJ Preller and how he should be gone. You know, in my opinion, I think AJ Preller has done wonders for this organization. He came in, he he traded all the former guys in the farm system. He wanted to go with some of his guys, Justin Upton, Derek Norris. None of it worked out. He replenished the farm system and he's built it into something special. Now, he made great moves this offseason. Injuries are out of his control. In my opinion, and I know this is slightly contrarian, I don't mind the moves or the lack of moves he made with starting pitching this in during the trade deadline. I compared it to the real estate market right now. Everything's overvalued, yet people are still buying. But AJ Preller knows that the Padres are in a luxurious position, unlike other teams where they have a four-year window. He didn't want to gut prospects to go get a Jose Barrios or a Kyle Gibson. So I don't think the scrutiny is on Preller. I think Preller's only problem is that he values loyalty over accountability. He values having guys like Jace Tingler, guys driving guys like Jerks and Profar, $21 million with Rangers lineage rather than holding guys accountable. And I think this was the first step Jace Tingler has made in this organization of accountability, taking control of this situation. I want to know your thoughts. Okay, as far as AJ, AJ, I think everyone expects him to pull a rabbit out of the hat every year because he's uh, pulled off some pretty doggone good trades. He couldn't get one done at this trading deadline. And you know what? You know, I'm I can't fault him. I mean, I'm sure the guy was trying. There's no doubt he was trying. But, you know, we've come to uh, see him, you know, uh, make these trades where we're going, wow, how did they get this guy or how did they get that guy? And it didn't work, okay? Now, as far as Jace Tingler's concerned, you know, I think they're going to have to evaluate Jace and the coaching staff and you evaluate the entire organization after each and every year, whether you win or you don't win, okay? But where the Padres are going to have to make a decision on Jace Tingler, if he's got a three-year contract, he'll be going into year three next year. And you're not going to send your manager into the final year of his contract as a lame duck. You're either going to extend him this offseason or during spring training. Or if you're not, then you may have to make a move uh, during this offseason. I think he comes back, okay? He did a great job last year. Interesting. On the job, very difficult situation with a pandemic. They're 10 games over 500, and they've been disappointing from what we expected. No question about it. Absolutely. Is there room for improvement? Yeah, there's a ton of room for improvement. But I think the Padres, they're going to have to answer that question, I think, this offseason, because at some point in time, uh, you know, whether it's A.J. Casabell or one of the local writers or national writers, say, hey, what are you doing with your manager going forward? You're not going to send Chase Tingler in the next season on the final year of his contract with Oh, they hung up on me. Okay. Yeah, fuck that. I wanted I wanted to clap back. I wanted to clap back, bro. I think he used my call as a segue. I think he used my call as a segue. He used my call as a segue to get into more things in his show. Oh my god, I wanted to clap back. I wanted to clap back. <laughs> Wait, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. I don't, guys, guys, I'm going to be honest with you guys, 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 I, guys, number one, listen, listen, I'm not shouting out my channel. I'm not a sellout. I'm not a sellout. Number one. Number two, I told you, I can't prepare for what I'm going to say. 
I, I, I cannot prepare for what I'm going to say. Everything that I do, it comes naturally. I needed to just have like a talking point. But holy shit. What's up, coach? <laughs> dude, I wish, I wish coach, dude, I wish, I wish coach would have heard that. I, I mean, I wish a coach would have let me, uh, <laughs> guys, I've been streaming for two hours on a Monday morning. You think I should have shouted it out? Guys, I can get on the show any day of the week, bro. I can't play the, oh yeah, we can play the audio. Back, uh, regards to Fernando Tati. 100% his decision as he talks to AJ and other people, but I don't think a lot of people. Here we go. Was very, very close here we go. Here we go. Done. Very close to getting done. And then they giving up Robert Hassel the third, uh, going to here we go. Here we go. Joey Gallo, which I was not a big fan of to begin with. Um, mm -hmm. But I just wonder if that upset the clubhouse a little bit. Not your answer there. Phone call right there. Uh, let's get out to Borna in San Diego. Borna, you're next up on the John Cantero show on 97.3 The Fan. Welcome on this Monday. Hey, Coach, i uh, got a few questions. The first thing I really wanted to discuss was, did Chase Taylor do this to save his own self? You know, he talked about this in the press conference, saying that this was 100% his decision as he talked to AJ and other people. But I don't think a lot of people or enough people are talking about, is Chase doing this to save his own self? We all know Damian easily could be next, as a lot of the scrutiny has been on the pitching, but the hitting has been, quite frankly, subpar since, I mean, probably uh, since May. So that's the first thing. And, you know, your first caller brought up the second thing about talking about AJ Preller and how he should be gone. You know, in my opinion, I think AJ Preller has done wonders for this organization. He came in, he he traded all the former guys in the farm system. He wanted to go with some of his guys, Justin Upton, Derek Norris. None of it worked out. He replenished the farm system, and he's built it into something special. Now, he made great moves this offseason. Injuries are out of his control. In my opinion, and I know this is slightly contrarian, I don't mind the moves or the lack of moves he made with starting pitching this in, during the trade deadline. I compared it to the real estate market right now. Everything's overvalued, yet people are still buying. But A.J. Fuller knows that the Padres are in a luxurious position, unlike other teams where they have a four-year window. He didn't want to gut prospects to go get a Jose Barrios or a Kyle Gibson. So I don't think the scrutiny is on Preller. I think Preller's only problem is that he values loyalty over accountability. He values having guys like Jace Kingler, driving guys like Jerson Profar, $21 million with Rangers lineage, rather than holding guys accountable. And I think this was the first step Jay Tingler has made in this organization of accountability, taking control of this situation. I want to know your thoughts. Okay, as far as AJ... <laughs> Oh, my God. Yeah. I mean, dude, I didn't know. He didn't give me the chance to respond. <laughs> Relax. Relax. <laughs> the coach's head was spinning. Oh, I'm so happy. I'm so happy. I'm proud of myself. Yeah, I've never done that. Of course I am. <laughs> that was awesome. That was awesome. I, I, I've never called in. <laughs> yeah, I think I gave the coach too much, huh? I can't, I gave I gave I gave the coach way too much. <laughs> I rammed it in. Dude, I did he didn't give me a chance. He didn't give me a chance. Holy shit, guys. All right, everybody. I think that's a good. I think that's a good place to end the stream. Um, I think that's a good place to end the stream. So, uh, <laughs> Rothschild's gone. <laughs> Rothschild's gone, and I'm a yo yo Kintera, yo Kintera. I'm coming for you. I'm coming for your job. Seriously, everybody, thank you so much for tuning in, guys. If you have not subscribed to the channel, join the Hogwatch. My God, I should have shouted it out. <laughs> if Rome would have rocked me, he would have racked you. Dude, I would have clapped back. I would have clapped back, bro. You don't understand. I'm good at clapping back, bro. Come at me.
Come at me, bro. He wasn't. I, I was going to respond. I just didn't want to interrupt the coach. <laughs> that will be born as a ringtone. All right, everybody. Seriously, guys, thank you so much. We are. Uh, all right, guys. Well, you know what? We'll just go on tomorrow then. We'll just go on tomorrow. Oh, guys, I'll go on Ben and Woods. I'll go, I'll go on Ben and Woods. I'll go on Ben and Woods and shout it out. They, they follow me on Twitter. They, fo they follow me on Twitter before I follow them. Guys, I'm telling you, Ben and Woods, they watch the hog watch. Ben and Woods watch the hog watch. They know exactly who's coming onto their show. I'll start calling Ben and Woods. Everybody, have a great rest of your Monday. Enjoy your lunch. Enjoy your dinners. Tell your family you love them. Thank you so much for you know tuning into the hog watch. Hit the subscribe button. Hit the like button. Guys, share the word. Follow me on Twitter, guys, right there at Hogborna. Have a great day, everybody. Signing out.